The carnivore diet is nothing new. Humans have been eating meat for a very long time, much longer than they've been eating Impossible Burgers. Some people would even say that we are meant to eat meat and we evolved doing so. I don't care what the perfect diet is for humans. All I really care about, what is the perfect diet for me? I'm not here to convince anyone of anything. There's enough information and research out there that indicates meat is good for you. And there's a plethora of people who have experienced huge benefits moving to animal-based, meat-based or exclusively animal-based diet. People do it for a lot of reasons, whether that be weight loss, to reverse autoimmune conditions, or because they have food intolerances and can't really eat anything except for animal products like me, or simply because they hate plants or carbs. Some people choose to go carnival and stay carnival, and some choose to go carnival and then slowly introduce foods. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a couple of the different types of carnival diets that are out there. Plus, I'll be sharing a version of the carnival diet that is completely underrated, that not enough people know about, and that is extremely powerful if you're in a chronic health situation and you need some extreme healing. By the way, not a doctor, not medical advice, go consult a practitioner that knows what they're talking about. I recommend choosing the version of Carnival that best suits your needs. If you're someone that is in a chronic health situation, I recommend choosing the Carnival GAPS diet or the Lion diet and working from there. Or if you just hate plants, then just stick to the Carnival diet. Just figure out what works for you, tweak things, give things a go, and of course work with a practitioner that knows what they're talking about. Number one, the Carnival diet. A lot of you guys would have heard about the carnival diet from seeing Sean Baker's interview on the Joe Rogan podcast, and that has been a very powerful catalyst for a lot of people discovering this way of eating. In this diet, you eat exclusively animal products and you only season with salt. As long as it comes from an animal, you're good. Beef, seafood, pork, poultry, bison, elk. When you eat an elk, man, you're eating an animal that's getting away from wolves and bears and fighting to the death with swords grown out of its head. I mean, literally, it's a forest horse with fucking spears grown out of its head. Lamb, eggs, dairy, organs. Add a bit of salt for seasoning and you're good. Two, I call it Carnival Diet Plus. This is where you do the original Carnival Diet, but you add things like spices, herbs, and maybe coffee if you want to. Number three, Ketovore. This is not so much a Carnival Diet, but it kind of fits into carnivore-ish or part-time carnival, whatever. And this is not exclusively animal-based, but it's predominantly animal-based. So you have your base as animal-based foods, and then you include some plants that you can tolerate. A lot of people do low-carb vegetables, green leafy vegetables, low-carb fruits, nuts and seeds, that kind of thing. As long as it's keto-friendly and it's not junk food keto, then you're good to go. Number four is smashing that like button and subscribing if you wanna see more videos. Number four, the lion diet. Some people can't tolerate eggs, pork, dairy, fish, poultry. So what are you bloody left with? Ruminant meat, beef, lamb, bison, elk, kangaroo, all things from animals that eat grass. This diet was popularized by Michaela Peterson and she was able to reverse autoimmune conditions, arthritis, all sorts of crazy stuff, eating all beef, all lamb, salt, and water. As a game changer, this is one of the things that introduced me to the carnival diet and gave me the impetus or the kick up the butt to just give it a crack because it seemed easy enough. Meat, salt, water. Hey, she's got a lot of great resources on her YouTube channel and also her website, which I'll link both down below. Number five is animal-based. Some people call this carnival, some people don't. This diet was popularized by Paul Saladino. It's funny, actually. His last name says Salad and he hates salad more than probably anyone else. And he's known as the Carnivore MD online and he promotes the animal-based diet. He used to promote Carnivore and now he's added fruits into that. It's focused on meat, heavy on organs, raw dairy, eggs, but it also includes fruit and fruit type vegetables like zucchini, cucumber, pumpkin. On this diet, you can eat as much fruit and carbs as you like basically, and you can also have honey. This is based on the premise that vegetables have a lot of anti-nutrients and things that are trying to kill you, whereas fruits apparently don't. Some people seem to do really well on this, and some people find that they don't do as well on this, so they go carnival. So again, tweak it, see what works for you. Number six, the last and most underrated version of carnival that could hold some answers to your healing if you're not getting results on carnival. It's called the Carnival Gaps Diet or the No Plant Gaps Diet. This is the lesser known version of the Carnival Diet and to be honest it needs way more airtime because it is so healing for people. It's a spin on the Gaps Diet that removes everything that is from the plant kingdom. It focuses on the basic principles of remove anti-inflammatory triggering foods, replace with healing nutrients, 
and restore gut microbiome. None of the other carnivore diets are focused on the microbiome and I feel like that is where they're lacking. This one, the number one focus is the gut. Instead of having meats grilled on the barbie or fried in tallow or all these things that are carnivore friendly, your meat is gonna be boiled, you're gonna be making meat stock. The seasonings that you're gonna use is basically just salt and you're gonna eat meat that's basically boiled until your body is able to tolerate the next things. And you move through these phases and slowly introduce new foods as you're able to. It's very different in the sense that there's no grilling, frying, barbecuing, roasting. Initially, you're just focused on boiled meat. If you've seen my videos, then you'll see that I'm boiling my meat and you're like, why are you boiling it? Well, firstly, when you boil a lamb, shank, not only are you getting that delicious meat, but you're also getting the nutrients from those bones, from the marrow, from the connective tissue that are all incredibly healing for the gut, the gut lining, anti-inflammatory, so, so good for you. You're getting all those good things that you wouldn't get if you would normally roast it. So you boil the meat in water with a bit of salt. I've got a recipe on my page, link down below, and it tastes delicious as well. So you get that meat stock, plus you get the meat, and then you just drink and chug that meat stock all day. Then you introduce things like probiotic or fermented dairy stuff that you make at home so you make like fermented yogurt that's been fermented for 24 hours you can do kefir you can do raw sour cream and all these sorts of things and slowly build up your tolerance to including more of that in your diet then you add raw egg yolks and you add organs and as you can then you can add ghee you can add butter you can add more animal products and fish and your repertoire expands and then you move into the GAPS intro diet and then if you want to you can move into full GAPS or you can just hover on carnivore if you really dig that. I know carnivore GAPS has healed even the most unhealable ulcerative colitis, even learning disabilities, autoimmune conditions, mental disorders, all sorts of crazy things and I've seen stuff in literature and stories from people. So it's definitely profound. And I think even if you took principles from Carnival Gaps and you brought it to your Carnival diet, then I think you would see huge improvements. If you're wanting to reintroduce foods on your Carnival diet, but you're struggling to do so, and you keep getting a pushback from your body, your body's like, nah, bro, I do not want to introduce stuff. Then try Carnival Gaps because if you can't introduce foods, you're still intolerant, your gut's not healed. So you need to focus on healing your gut, right? So. Heal your gut and then you can start introducing and eating those foods. I have friends that have been food intolerant and they've done gaps and they feel way better. So, could be a missing piece. All the information about carnival gaps, no plant gaps, is in the gut and physiology syndrome book. Definitely check it out. Or there's a bonus one. You can go raw carnival and only eat raw animal products. I'd love to know, if you're on carnival, which version do you eat or would you like to try? And what's it done for your health? If you want some recipe ideas, then you can check this video out right here. Oh my goodness, that looks delicious.